Yeah, yeah, what's good? Welcome to Cine 230, week four, day one. We got the exam next class, so I know you're all studying right now, um, getting prepped for that. Just down here, uh, one of my pole barns, I've been messing around this morning um, with some, uh, some frames. I inherited some new... Uh, uh, honeybee hives so anyways I'm cleaning out some frames um, I'm gonna put some new foundation in them um, get them cleaned up I'm gonna make my first stab at uh, beekeeping this summer since I got a whole bunch of bunch of time stuff smells so good um, but anyways that's what we're doing down here in the pole barn um, wish I probably should have found a little more I guess uh, you owe-ish sort of place to do this lecture from because really today we're talking about you know something that may be really important to you which is the University of Oregon um, the duck uh, the O you know um, all those things and intellectual property law and intellectual property rights sorry getting rid of toothpicks real professional uh, but anyways uh, we're gonna be talking about some of that stuff commercial filming on campus and uh, some of those things. I just, you know, think it's important for you to have a, a clue about some of this stuff. Um, and I think a lot of, specifically, the trademark stuff will make a lot more sense uh, as we move into um, the second unit of this class, which actually does start today. Um, and then we have the exam, and then we talk about trademark and stuff. So this stuff will probably make a little bit more sense, but we'll try to just work through some of the ideas. Um, but I do like, you know, students to kind of get a sense of how intellectual properties work at universities and why they're important. So to give you a sense of this, um, anywhere you see anything that is University of Oregon, <clears throat> whether it's a, you know, U Oregon toothbrush, uh, a, a shirt with an O on it, um, a pair of sneakers, you know, the duck, um, anything that says yellow, go ducks, any, any of that stuff, um, those, those companies that manufacture those goods have licensed the right to use University of Oregon trademarks and intellectual properties for those goods. They're not necessarily made by the University of Oregon. These uh, companies who use UO intellectual properties are called licensees. They license the right to put University of Oregon you know, logos and catchphrases and colors onto headwear apparel coffee mugs, blankets, wh whatever it is, okay? Um, so the university has, yeah, over 500 uh, licensees that it licenses the right to manufacture goods bearing its, its name and likeness and, and uh, logos, essentially. Um, so just to give you a sense, the standard royalty rate is 12%, and there's an advance payment. This advance payment is two grand for apparel and 70, $750 for any other type of good. So what this means is this, is say you want to um, make a t-shirt that says, go ducks, <laughs> or whatever, right? Like real simple. You would have to pay the University of Oregon $2,000 to become a licensee, right? Uh, to basically, you know, say that, you know, we are licensing the right to say, go ducks on a t-shirt. Um, and you'll pay them $2,000 up front, and then you will pay them 12% of your sales every quarter of those items bearing the Go Duck. So they get 12% um, of the sale, the final sale amount uh, of the good uh, as a royalty, you know, that you, that you pay them, okay? And that's basically, basically how it works. The other thing you must do is you have to submit to them um, a copy or a version of what you've made. So you need to give them one of the t-shirts and they'll have to inspect that for quality purposes. Because if you manufacture a really shitty t-shirt and someone, you know, people buy them, let's say a group of people buy a bunch of your Go Ducks shirts and, you know, the sleeves start falling off, uh, they, they shrink really bad in the wash, uh, wh whatever it is, they're not going to blame you as a company, like you, the company that manufactured them. They're going to associate that lack of quality with the University of Oregon. So the University of Oregon, as well as any other trademarks 
uh, hold, hold, trademark holder for, for anything, right? Um, they have to police their brand. So they have to make sure the quality is good. They also have to police counterfeits, which is why if you've been to Autzen and you've tailgated and you've seen people selling tie-dye shirts with the uh, O, the stylized O that you recognize that's on basically everything, right? And you'll see these people being chased off the lot. That's the University of Oregon protecting itself. Specifically, actually, in that instance, is the University of Oregon has an exclusive licensing agreement with Nike for all headwear and apparel with the O on it. So go to the duck store someday or look around at anything you have that has the O on it that you wear in your head or your body and it will be sold by Nike. It will also have a swoosh on it. Okay, the O was designed by Tinker Hatfield, who's a Nike. Uh, designer, he designed the Jumpman logo for the Air Jordans and tons of sneakers. He's designed Matt Court, uh, you know, he's designed the new duck that we use, the duck that isn't Donald Duck, okay? Um, and so, uh, you know, I just, I just think, like, you know, you just need to know that, like, well, why is there no competition? Why is there not a Reebok with an O on it? or a, an Adidas made good, you know, shirt with an O on it. It's because Nike has an exclusive right to manufacture headwear and apparel bearing the O logo, specifically the O. That's why everything is hella expensive. You want a dry fit, it's like $60 if it's got an O on it, okay? So that's real important. So we have an exclusive licensing agreement, which means no one com can compete in that specific market. Now you see plenty of other goods with the O on it toothbrushes, uh, shampoo, duct tape, I don't know, like keychains, figurines, whatever it is, that's, that's a different market and those licenses are, you know, are, dif are different. But we have an exclusive uh, agreement with, with Nike, okay? We used to have our own licensing department. We were one of probably 10 universities uh, that had its own licensing department where they would handle all licensing um, of University of Oregon intellectual properties. Now, we still have a department that deals with a lot of that stuff, but we now go through Fermata, which deals with broadcast rights. It deals with trademark rights and, and all those things, um, which is a third-party organization that many universities uh, use. Um, the lastly, uh, our fight song, uh, Mighty Oregon, you know, the duck fight song, that's in the public domain. So that's actually free for you to use and um, you can make your own, you know, you can make a trap version of it. You can make, you know, uh, your own classical version of it. That's in the public domain for you to use. However, other people's performances of that, meaning other people's recordings of Mighty Oregon, those are not in the public domain, just the composition itself. So. You probably recognize a lot of the University of Oregon trademarks if I were to actually show them to you. So um, you can see, you know, uh, here we have the new duck. This is the Tinker Hatfield designed uh, duck. And this duck, you know, is uh, very different than um, uh, Donald the Duck, which you will see on some shirts at the duck store, which you will see in like some older stuff. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Hopefully you read a little bit about the history of our mascot and everything. But as you know, our mascot is called the duck. Okay, that's the, the one of the many students who wear uh, a duck costume and do push-ups and go to birthday parties and stuff. And we'll talk a little bit later about why uh, the duck can now go to birthday parties and bar mitzvahs and be on the Capital One mascot challenge and ESPN commercials. But some of our... Um, Important trademarks are things like the University of Oregon. That's a, a trademark. And these are often registered on behalf of the state of Oregon for its state institutions. UO is a federally registered trademark. Oregon Ducks, Go Ducks, Oregon Football, Oregon Basketball, Oregon Track and Field. Okay, uh, Track Town is also um, a trademark of the University of Oregon. And it's kind of an interesting story if you read a little bit about the history. Obviously, we have Tracktown Pizza. There used to be a Tracktown Brewery, I believe. And, you know, no one can really actually trace the etymology of the word Tracktown to uh, an actual origin, okay? But the, the main thing when we think about Tracktown, who do we, what do we think of? Why is this Tracktown? It's because of the University of Oregon. That's, for no other reason is this 
a, a, a track and running uh, epicenter <clears throat> in the United States, except for the fact that the University of Oregon is here and its and its rich history in that. So there is, you know, um, a local uh, club, running club, that you know had track town and were using it for events and stuff. And then eventually, the university. This is like years and years later. Um, this is actually relatively recently. Um, squeezed them out of using it. Let let's say that because when the the association of track town is with the University of Oregon so they claimed a little bit of ownership over that so you cannot use track town uh, for promotional purposes however they do allow the university does allow track town pizza to exist because it has existed using that name um, for a long time we're talking we're talking decades so uh, as we'll learn when we talk about trademark um, often you have a very strong case that um, you own a word as long as you use it in a marketplace for an extended amount of time. All right, uh, things like Hay Harrywood Field, Autzen Field, Howe Field, Matt Court, those are all also um, uh, trademarks of the University of Oregon. Yell O used to be, and probably still is. You, you could go and look on the United States um, Patent and Trademark uh, website, and you could see all of the trademarks that are held um, on behalf of the University of Oregon or by the University of Oregon. Um, we own Civil War is a trademark that's held between OSU and um, the uh, University of Oregon as well. We have a licensing agreement or licensing pool or uh, cross-licensing agreement, however you want to call it, with uh, OSU uh, that, we, that we have the exclusive right to use the word Civil War in a sports context, so no one else can use that. Um, okay, uh, so... Uh, We'll, we'll take a minute here. I want you to watch this video about the duck. It's kind of campy and cheesy um, and isn't the greatest, let's say, uh, historical document, but it does give you a nice little uh, history of the duck and, and talk about some things which I will extrapolate upon uh, after you watch the video. So, so come right back and, and we'll chat about this. Um, and don't be afraid of RoboDuck, okay? RoboDuck is, is crazy scary. <laughs> 